Ephesians 5, beginning with verse 8. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Now I sent out to you some sermon notes, and I thought I'd send this supplement to you, uh, making some comments on those sermon notes for the devotion uh, this Sunday. And I want you to think about this idea of light. If you want to decrease crimes in the streets, what do you do? You install new and better lighting. If you want to get rid of dishonesty in business or politics, um, cast on these nefarious acts or deeds uh, with public knowledge. If you want to find a cure for a troubling disease, and it's very pertinent to know, Let the contributions add more candle power to the already existing body of brilliant research minds. And that's kind of what we're doing now with uh, coronavirus. As we think about this, uh, light is a prominent theme that we see in all of Holy Scripture. And as you look at Christ, the light of the world, the title for that sermon I had prepared for you this weekend, Christ brings people out of darkness into light. I want you to think about this as we look at verse 8 and 9. Now we remember Simeon. Simeon was long in years, but he had an unfulfilled life. He, He was troubled by the fact that he had not yet seen the Savior. And we know the joy he had when that happened. Then think about the palsied man. Frustration, despair of having a permanent infirmity, something you can't fix that drags you down. And then there's Martha. Martha was a busy one, and superficially in life, uh, it lacked meaning because of her busyness. In fact, sometimes we see this going on with people in their busy lives. I know I had one friend that told me, before I had to deal with Jack Kevorkian, if you remember Dr. Death, uh, my religion was my legal practice. This was my friend Richard Thompson and he said that dealing with Jack of Orkham brought him back into the Word of God, brought him back into understanding who his God was. Also, we see the thief on the cross. And look, think about the thief of the cross there. He looked into the eyeball to eyeball at a closed future. All he saw was death as he was facing that death. But then there was Christ. And notice that in each of these cases, whether it's Simeon, the palsied man, Martha, or the thief on the cross, the entrance of Christ into the lives of these people brought out dramatic changes. Now think about Christ as the light of the world. It continues um, later as people are living in godliness uh, and artificial Christianity. Think about the light of a, a promising future in our professional lives, our jobs, It becomes our purpose, as I shared with you already in regards to Martha, my friend Richard Thompson. Think about the light of an abundant materialism, a desire to get rather than the desire for God. And that is so prevalent in our lives. And we find times that getting becomes more important than our own God in our own lives. How about the light of extensive knowledge? Sometimes reason is used in a wrong way. There's a magisterial use of reason and a ministerial use of reason. A ministerial use of reason goes ahead and uses reason to read the scriptures, to go ahead and interpret those scriptures the way scriptures are supposed to be interpreted. But magisterial use of reason goes above God and reasons above God's desire. And sometimes reason is more desirable than faith in Christ and his word. And that's a very bad thing when people start to intellectualize out their future. And then there's the light of spectacular entertainment. And I think this one is interesting because I wrote this sermon three weeks ago. And that was before all of our entertainment has been taken away. 
the entertainment is gone with coronavirus. Uh, there is an HBO show called The Religion of Sports. How does that religion of sports serve you now when there's no sports going on right now? And if that's your religion, it's very disappointing. But we also see the light of Christ makes us different than darkness. Light makes you different. In fact, this text tells you that you are light. And you are light because of your baptism. Think about the rich young ruler. He came to Christ living with moral directives that failed him. He thought about, you know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he didn't need to do anything. But the biggest problem that that rich young ruler had is that his God was his stuff. And when Jesus told him to get rid of his stuff, it superseded his idea of moral directives because his stuff was his God. The disciples disputed over the place of honor in heaven. And remember James and John there, whether who was going to be able to sit in that place of honor. And I want you to think personally about your own self. Like these people, we are rough diamonds that need to be cut, and we need to be cut with the love of Christ. Only Christ can give us that light. Man, by his own speculation, man, by psychological analysis and emotional um, decision, believes that he is enlightened. The tragedy that in this Christless morality and idealism uh, man has still to learn that he is in darkness. Our world needs to hear the words of Christ. I have come as light to the world that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Well, it's interesting as we hear those last words and perhaps going through what we're going through now as a nation, as a world, or change our ideas and maybe open some hearts up to understanding who God is and what he has done for them and that he can bring them that light. In the name of Jesus, amen.